Boxing Truth here, back with another video. Let's talk about this Japanese cherry picker. Not in a way. Coming off another victory in the bantamweight division, he was able to secure a knockout this time over a overmatch Jason Maloney. Man, in a way. I don't know what's up with you, bro. You ducked the legacy fights to fight the Jason Maloney's of the world. To fight Wash Fighters. To swerve the elites of the super flyweight divisions. Only to fight lesser names. Faded fighters that you actually struggled with. And Onito Donaire almost got knocked out by that old man. And yet here you are. The cherry picking continues. And I'm just wondering why on earth did you duck these legacy fights? You won't even fight one of them. Chocolatito, Estrada, Rungvasai. Not even one of them. Those are your legacy fights. And all those guys and all those guys are in your thirties. And yet here you are, considered top three, top five, some of you consider you the best in the world. And I'm just wondering what the plan is, bruh. I mean, they're all in their 30s. Estrada's 30 years old. Rangwesai is 33 going on 34. Chocolatito is 32 going on 33. And you ducked each and every one of them to fight the Jason Maloney's of the world. I'm just wondering what the plan is. And what's funny, you probably beat those guys. I mean, those guys are not in their primes right now. But those are the legacy fights. They're all fighting each other and making a name for themselves. And you're fighting the Jason Maloney's of the world. I'm just trying to, I'm just wondering what the plan is. What does top rank got for you? You're going to fight these lesser name guys. Instead of the legacy fights that are right by you, but you choose not to fight these guys. Won't even fight one of them. I mean, Estrada's not in his prime. He got dropped by a faded Quadras, but you won't even fight him. Chocolatito's not in his prime, but you won't even fight him. Rungvisai, still a dangerous fighter, dangerous puncher, but he's not in his prime, and you won't even fight him. Why not? Why are you ducking these trio of legacy fights? And what's in store for top rank now that you defeated another overmatched opponent? Were well, you gonna fight a faded rigging down now? I'll laugh my ass off if you end up fighting rigging down. You'll get no props if you fight rigging down. Who's that other guy who's supposed to fight that got canceled? The Philippine puncher. I can't remember his name right now. What was his name? Let's see the Bantamweight division real quick. Because, in a way, it's one of the bigger cherry pickers in boxing. Fooling the boxing public that he's fighting the best names or the best opponents available, but he's really not. So let's look at this weak ass Bantamweight division. What's this top rank really got in store for you, man? Because it just makes me wonder. There's a reason why you're picking and choosing these opponents, man. All right. Nordin Obali. Decent fighter. Nothing special. Casmero. Big puncher. Nothing special. Rigandau. Faded. On the verge of being 
beaten as soon as he fights a decent opponent. Doesn't get gifted with what he's been gifted with in his career, especially his last fight. Struggled against Solis. Won a split decision. I just wonder, man, what's what's the plan? Where is your legacy fight if you're not going to fight these guys? There's nothing here in this. There's nothing here in this bantamweight division, man. There's no legacy fights here. There's no elite fights here. I mean, they're decent fighters, they're okay fighters, they're good fighters, some big punchers. But these are not legacy fights. So what if you move up to super bantamweight? What's there? What is actually there, bro? They ain't shit at super bantamweight. Luis Neri is a hot and cold fighter. Doesn't make weight consistently. Ray Vargas, who gives a shit about him? Stephen Fulton, come on, man. Like, I just don't understand. Why did you leave Frog three legacy fights to fight the Jason Maloney's of the world? Give me at least one of them. Give me the winner of Estrada Chocolatito or Estrada Rungvisai. Can you do that, actually? Nah. You're going to keep cherry picking. You're going to keep picking and choosing the opponents you want to face because you got a weakness, bruh. And that's your defense. That's your head movement. Offensively, I ain't got no problems with you. Offensively, you know, you really put it down. You really got, what you know, you got the punching power, you got the left hook to the body, you got the right hand, the counter right hand, but you ain't confidence in your chin, and you ain't confidence in your defense. Rumbleside could probably knock your ass out, but you won't even give him an opportunity. Estrada's a great counter puncher, but he's been in some wars, so there's a possibility you can actually beat all three of these guys. But you won't get no credit for not fighting these guys, man. You can't just, you know, do these hypotheticals and just say, oh, he beats these guys. He's younger and fresher. Show me you can beat these guys. Instead of leapfrogging them. Instead of ducking and dodging and swerving to fight the Jason Maloney's of the world. I still am, I'm still not on board, man. I'm still not, not, not on board on that hype train. Not until you at least fight one of these guys. And in my view, it should be Chocolatito. Because if that rematch occurs with Estrada, I believe he beats him. And Rumbasai can turn the tables in a potential third fight as well. So at least fight one of those guys, bruh. Give me one legacy fight. But it don't matter. The fans will th- continue to dick ride you and say you're number one pound for pound in the world. Fuck out of here. It's boxing truth. I'm out.